Hello everybody, this is Shadil Qassas, the Director of Innovation at Al-Ittihad National Private School Al-Ain. And today we are at the IAC, the International Aeronautical Congress in Dubai. Today we have a very interesting interview with one of the researchers in the fields of space. So stay tuned. Hello again, and today I am with Fu Vu, the Senior Research Engineer at Yasat uh, Space Lab. Lab. Space Lab. And today is going to introduce to some interesting technologies that can be used by students at schools and universities. Stay tuned. Hello everyone, my name is Tu Wu from Yasa Space Lab, uh, Khalifa University in Abu Dhabi, UAE. Here in our Space Lab, we, are do, we have an educational uh, space program uh, where we uh, teach students you know, how to build CubeSats. The CubeSats, they are very small satellites, so instead of building you know, traditional large satellites, we take a lot of money, a very long time to build, instead of building very small ones. Here is the, the lineup of you know, a small satellite that we develop in our lab. Uh, we start with MySat1. This is the first satellite that we built together with a team of students in, in our uh, space lab. It took us three years from designing, building, assembly, integration and testing of the satellite until launch. Here the students have a chance to participate in the full life cycle of a satellite project. It's, it's a great experience. Uh, students can, can do hands-on you know, uh, activities uh, involved in building, testing the spacecraft. Let's take a look at the uh, spacecraft, you know. It's very small, it's uh, 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter. It's like a cube. So that's why we call it CubeSat. You can see all the components. So students will have to learn about different components of the satellite, uh, including, you know, the EPS, electrical power subsystem. How can it uh, generate power from the sun and feed it and distribute it to the other component? They need to learn about OBC. It's the onboard. Uh, computer system, it's the brain of the satellite, how to control different uh, things. You will need to learn about the uh, radio subsystem. Uh, students need to, to uh, send and receive command. And then another important subsystem is the ADCS, stand for Attitude Control, Determination and Control Subsystem. Once in space, the satellite needs to determine its orientation in space and then to be able to turn it to point it to uh, where we want it uh, to be. Uh, and in our case, we have a payload subsystem. We, my side one, carry a small, low resolution camera. We want it to take picture of the Earth. And also, we, we are flight testing a coin cell battery. We want, to, uh, we want to see if it works in space or not. So we design, we build the circuit uh, in-house. So that's the, our very first mission. It was launched uh, back in uh, 2019 and we uh, got a good result. So our um, next uh, second generation satellite is called DABISAT. It's a 2U, it's a 2 unit satellite. It's double the size of MySat1. So with this one, we have improved camera system. So we have uh, um, with a higher resolution and then a bigger lens. And actually the good thing is that we use a Raspberry Pi for the camera. It's a commercial up the shelf product, very cost effective. And then we want to fly test it in, in space. And then the latest uh, one is the 3U. So we can see we are growing in size. So it's a step-by-step -step approach. We start with the small one, we move to uh, increasing the size and the mass and the capability. So this one is like one. Uh, the mission is to study the terrestrial gamma ray. So, you know, during a thunderstorm, during a lightning, uh, there are some uh, gamma rays coming out of lightning. And the mission of light one is to study those uh, gamma rays. It might affect because you know gamma ray it have very high penetration capability, so it can penetrate you know like the body of the aircraft and like an airframe you know carrying passenger. So we would like to study the effect of that you know on the uh, the passenger. So like what we, we have just completed the satellite, we deliver it to JAXA, the Japanese Aerospace uh, Agency last month. It's waiting for launch uh, end of this, this year. So uh, you're welcome to visit our lab, you know, in Khalifa University and then feel free to ask if you have any questions. Thank you. Hello again and uh, today we are with Thu again and we are going to ask him some questions related to space science and space technologies. So uh, Thu, do you think that uh, studying space technologies such as satellites, building satellites and so on, do you think that this will give uh, the students any opportunity to develop the learning, develop the learning journey? Uh, tell me your thoughts about this. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I do believe that, you know, by having the, the students, school students uh, from, you know, our uh, school, you know, to be, uh, to have a chance, you know, to participate in the um, space project, you know, building a CubeSat is really beneficial, you know. Um, students will not only have a chance to be able to learn, you know, the skill needed, you know, like engineering and um, space different, you know, it's difficult than the, what we are doing on the ground because space is very challenging. When you talk about a space project, you know, you, look, you need to look into uh, from different perspective, different uh, multidisciplinary. Like, you know, you need to have uh, mechanicals, uh, from uh, electrical, from software engineering. All of these skills have to be put together and in order to build uh, something that, that works in, in the harsh environment of, of space. And not only that, you, it, uh, a spacecraft, a small uh, satellite, you know, could, be, could have a lot of um, potential application, you know, like scientific study. Let's say you want to observe something in space, and then on the on the ground on Earth, you know, uh, it's very difficult to observe those phenomena in space because we are blocked by the uh, atmosphere. The atmosphere, you know, protects us from the space environment. But if you want to really to, to learn about like planets, star, galaxy, you have to go beyond the atmosphere to be able to look into space. So that's why we need a you know, space telescope, a space sensor, sensor-based uh, space-based sensor. And then there are also, you know, a lot of uh, potential applications, you know, on the ground. For example, uh, with the recent, you know, global warming, you know, the, the Earth is warming, right? Uh, it, it's not a good thing. However, on the bright side, it's, it's melting, the ice are melting. And then, especially in the Arctic route, for example, I'm, I'm, talking, I'm giving an example. The ice are melting and it opened up a new sea route. So instead of, for example, um, talk, let's talk about like sea transportation from Japan to Europe. So usually they have to take a very long route, you know, from Europe to the Mediterranean, to the Red Sea, Indian Ocean, all the way to Japan. So now, instead of having to go to such a long road, they can go through the Arctic, to the North Sea. However, navigating those areas is not easy because there's a lot of iceberg, you know, moving around. So a satellite, a small satellite platform, which a dedicated sensor for monitoring the movement of the ice on the Arctic Ocean be a great tool you know to have you know shipping company to to plan their route ahead and uh, have to shorten the uh, uh, I mean to save the fuel in the time for, for the ship and then another thing is with small satellite we can it's a very nice test platform you know for new technology let's say you come up with a new idea new sensor and something new you want to, to test it in, in, in space to uh, what we call is to gain the fly heritage so with if you take a traditional larger satellite, they were not willing to, to take the risk. I mean, they don't want to take the risk with the new latest technology. However, the small satellite that we are working on is a very great platform to, to demonstrate, to, to prove it, you know, to fly proven uh, uh, any component. So, uh, working with small satellites is opening up a whole lot new possibility that was not uh, imaginable before. So, come and join us. And, uh, yeah. You're free to ask more questions. Thank you, thank you, uh, Du. Uh, I believe that this is uh, a great opportunity for us to be introduced to uh, another horizon for sciences and technology. And I believe, from what you've said, is that uh, introducing uh, sat, uh, CubeSats and the nano satellite technologies to students, uh, this is going to be uh, a new opportunity for them to apply the STEAM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and arts in the right context and in, a, in the real life uh, context using uh, real technology used by uh, uh, small scientists and young scientists. So uh, do you think that space uh, sciences and space technologies, when it is introduced to schools, do you think that it will provide students with other opportunities? Uh, what do you think about that? Oh yeah, definitely. So uh, let, let, let's take a look a little bit back into the history of CubeSat, you know, like 20 years ago, 20 years ago, when the idea of CubeSat was first proposed, even at NASA, a lot of people, they, they laugh at the idea. They, 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 they said, you know, what can you do with such a small uh, small box, you know? Because traditionally, satellites are very large. They are the size of a small bus or a car, you know? However, uh, CubeSat, you know, thanks to the advance of, you know, electronic and uh, technology, now we, everything could be miniaturized and then they have a very powerful. And this is growing. This is a chance, you know, for, so now even, uh, Students, you know, um, 
from, from high school, you know, you can you don't limit your imagination. With you, if you have your any any idea, we can realize it within the uh, package of CubeSat, and it, it's a great tool, you know, for education and to gain hands-on you know, experience. And the good thing is that we can do something very quickly and very cost-effective. So instead of investing a lot amount of money, take a long time on traditional space mission, we can accomplish something very quickly, something uh, within the uh, with the CubeSat itself. Thank you, thank you, Lou. It is our pleasure to meet uh, a real scientist working on uh, space technologies. It was our pleasure, and inshallah, I believe that we're going to have a lot more uh, to elaborate more about space technology with you. So, do you promise us? Yeah, definitely. And it's my pleasure to talking to you. Uh. Thank, thank you. you, thank you, thank you very much.